If you're a React developer and you go anywhere in the web right now or just in general, then you will always find a comparison between Redux, Redux Toolkit and Zustand. Or maybe I'm not pronouncing it right, it's either Zustand or Zustand. I'm just gonna call it Zustand for this video. But yeah, these three tools, these are very essential to manage one thing in your application, which is the global state. Now you need a global state in your application because when you have a lot of components and a lot of different pages in your entire React web application, then a lot of those components or pages will be using some data, will be using some parts of data in a similar fashion throughout the application. So for example, if you had component one, component two, component three, then it could be that these three components that I just wrote over here, they could be reusing some piece of data in each of their respective components or basically in each of their respective pages. For example, let's consider the user data. Now the user data can contain the email, name, phone number and whatnot. Now based on some user specific information, we decide to show a part of the component. So let's say component one has a CTA, which we should display only if the user data is present. Similarly for component two, there's some widget that we display only if user data is available and so on. So basically component one, two, three all require the user data. So in that case, we don't always want to store the user data in a variable specifically for that page and then access it in that page or component respectively. Instead, we want to store the user data globally so that every component can access it directly from there. So for example, let me just zoom out a little bit and I will open the pen tool and here I'll just go over here. So let's say there is one, two, three. These are all individual pages and here's the user data. Now this, this is present in the global state. But if let's say I didn't add user over here, instead I added user data here for the page one, then I added user data again here for the page two, and then I added user data again over here for the page three. Meaning I create a variable user in each of these pages and I add the user data to the user variable and then I use each of these user data in each of these pages. To do that, I would have to each time create the user data variable inject the user data to the user and then use it in this page it's itself. And I would have to do that three times for each of these three pages, which is not at all a good practice. So rather than creating the user state individually in each of these pages, we create something called the global store. And this is where we put in states such as the user data in this case, so that pages which require the same data across the application can directly subscribe to the user state over here and access the user information in their respective pages directly rather than having to create it on and on again. All right, so that is the use case of global state in React. It really cleans up your code, cleans up the mess. It gives a very nice overview and idea of where everything is and where you're subscribing to from where rather than creating every state individually in your respective pages and causing a lot of confusion and excess unrequired code. So. That is where Redux, Redux Toolkit and Zustand come in because they help us to create this global store where we can make things, where we can reuse a lot of the same logic or same data. But in the React ecosystem, there are a lot of global state management tools. However, these three are the most popular, Redux, Redux Toolkit and Zustand. Now, Redux and Redux Toolkit are very common for large companies. Like most of the large companies, they already use Redux and Redux Toolkit. They already have that inbuilt, so they don't prefer moving on to a new global state management tool like Zustand. But we still have Zustand in this list because it really differentiates the way you can use it with respect to these two. It really simplifies your code, has a lot less boilerplate, and is really easy to use. So let's just quickly go through the differences between Redux, Redux Toolkit, and Zustand. So first of all, as you can see here, Redux has a lot of setup action types and switch cases. So I will also show you code examples for this. So don't worry. So when you work with just normal Redux, you have to create action types. You have to dispatch them. You have a lot of setup. You have to create the store. You have to create switch cases for the different action types. Then you update the state based on the action type. Then that state gets updated and then you use that state in your respective components. That is so much work for just trying to update and access a state. 
just to do those two things, why should you have to go through all of these things like setup, action types, switch cases, and so on. In Redux Toolkit, this part exists, but it's a little low compared to Redux because it has something called Create Slice, which reduces the boilerplate. Create Slice behind the scenes, it handles a lot of your action type setup and all, so you don't have to do that manually. Redux Toolkit is going to do that for you. Now in Zustand, it is very minimal. You can define state and actions in one function. So just to give you a quick example of how this works, I will actually go down here. You can see I have three pictures over here. One is for classic Redux, for Redux Toolkit, and for Zustand. So I will actually add these side by side. All right, so now you can clearly see the differences between the three. So in classic Redux, we first create an actions.js file where we create the respective action that we want to do. So let's say we want to add a to-do object or add a to-do to the to-do array. Then we create the action type that we need, which is add to-do in this case. Then we need to create the function add to-do, which takes in the type, which is this add to-do itself and the payload, which is the data we need to add to the state. So this generally doesn't stay in the actions.js file. This stays in some other file, but basically you're doing three different things just to update the state and get the state. You're creating this variable add to do, which is going to be the type of action you want to perform. You're creating a function for that action that you want to perform, where all you do in this function is you specify the type of the function. Basically, in this case, we want to add a to do. So the type is going to be add a to do and the payload is going to be nothing but the data that we need to add to the state to update the state. So the payload will basically contain a new to do. In this case, it's just a text. And this, so basically this add to do is going to return this object, which has the type, which is add to do and the payload, which is the, which is the new data that we need to add to the entire to do state. Then in the, in the reducer.js, it's going to have the initial state. This is initially going to be empty, but if there's already data in this, it will have some to do's already in this. Then there's going to be a to do reducer. You have to create the reducer, which takes in the state and the action, the action here, the action or type is nothing but all these to do's, all these parts over here. So this can have add to do, remove to do, update to do, and so on. So based on the action dot type, you will go ahead and, and perform the certain logic. So in add to do, all we need to do is we need to spread all the existing to do's in a new array. So if the state, this initial state has any to do's, we just spread it into the new array and then we add the extra new to do, which is over here. So we add action dot payload. So all the to do's will be spread in the new array plus the new to do that will be added to this array. Similarly, if there, there was remove to do, then over here, we would create a new case remove to do. We would do a filtering logic from the state based on the action dot payload, and then we would return the new state and so on. But that is so much boilerplate just for one simple thing, just to add the to do. We have to do so much over here. That doesn't seem so worthwhile. And then next, if you also need to add API calls and whatnot, then you have to use something called create async thunk, which if you go over here, um, sorry, create async thunk was for Redux toolkit. You would have to use Redux thunk. This requires external middleware. So you have to install Redux thunk. And then via this, you can do API calls, basically asynchronous code and all that. So it's like so much for just a simple piece of thing. And similarly in Redux toolkit, it's comparatively lesser than classic Redux, but it's still not minimal. So if you see here, it has everything within this create slice. You don't have to explicitly go out of your reach and create an add to do action like we're doing over here. So this part gets skipped. You just create the name to do's, which denotes that this is going to be your to do's reducer. Then you have the initial state, which is an empty array. And then your reducers, which is nothing but the functions or the logic you're going to perform on your, on your initial state or your current state. So within this reducer, you have your add to do function, which takes again the state and the action. And to the state, you can push the action dot payload. So you don't need to do something like type and payload. You don't need to send that separately, create another add to do variable and all these, these parts are very confusing. You don't need to do all that. In this add to do itself, you just send your current state and the payload, and then you perform the logic right over here. That's it. And then you export it and you can use this add to do anywhere in your component. This is still more readable compared to this over here. Then comes the stand which is very small, minimal, and easy. Over here, you can see, we just directly import create from the stand. We create our to-do store. We call it something like use to-do store, which is like a hook. You use the built-in create method from the stand. 
you extract the set property from Zustand, which probably sets the state or updates the state. This is very easy to read because in your individual pages also you do something like the state name and then set state name. So this follows a similar pattern, so it's much easier to read. So over here, as you can see, you have your initial state and the method that updates your initial state. That's it. So in add to do, you use, you use set, which gets the initial state or basically the current state of the state. And then you specify that within the state, I want to update this to do state and you update it however, however you want based on your payload that you have received in the add to do. So this is even more easily to, easy to read as compared to Redux and Redux Toolkit. So Zustand over here is, that's why very popular these days, especially if you're trying to build and ship things faster, you can go with Zustand because it's really going to help you get on it right away. You don't have to think too much. You don't have to waste so much time on boilerplate code. You can just, you just know this is going to work right out of the box and you can build your MVP quickly and launch. Whereas on the other hand, this, this is for a more structured approach for larger teams and so on. And Redux Toolkit is what I feel is still better than classic Redux because Redux Toolkit is built on top of Redux with some extra features because it has a lot of cool things internally. For example, it has great developer tools, debugging and all that. You can debug your code very easily using the Redux dev tools. And it also has functionalities to manage your API calls. For example, there is API cache invalidation or basically, or basically Redux toolkit behind the scenes itself. It can ensure that let's say if you've called an API once in that page and you're calling it again, like by some mistake or something, like maybe some other use effect or state re-render is calling that use effect again, then it won't call that API call, that same API call twice in your network tab. It will only call it once depending on the payload of your API call. So if the payload doesn't change, even if you call that use effect or that API call twice the, in the network tab, that API call is going to only be called once rather than twice. So it handles all these optimizations behind the scenes. It actually has a lot of cool optimizations behind the scenes. So that is why a lot of people prefer Redux Toolkit as well. I also like Redux Toolkit personally. But if you want to quickly get into global state management and ship your product, then the stand is great. Otherwise, I would say Redux Toolkit is also a fantastic choice. So over here, Redux Toolkit and that part which I was talking about where you can invalidate cache or where Redux behind the scenes checks your API calls, uh, make sure it optimizes it by calling the APIs only once, only when the payload changes and so on. That is done by something called RTK query. So it has RTK query within Redux Toolkit, which helps to manage all these things. There's also another library called React query, which is great at managing all these things, but that's a separate topic. Then over here, you can see we discussed pretty much everything, but as you can see here, the setup complexity in Redux is manual store setup, middleware, combining reducers. I haven't even showed you that part over here. If we show all this part of setting up the store, middlewares, combining reducers, it becomes so much more. This is simplified with configure store. You just have one file where you call configure store and you, and you list down all your reducers in that one file, which lets the global store to know that all these states exist. This is also super lightweight. There is no provider or setup or setup required. Pretty amazing. So in async support, there's Redux, there's Redux thunk over here. If you want to call APIs using Redux, then you have to use Redux thunk. For this, there's create async thunk, uh, and you can also use RTK query. And over here, there's no built-in API handling, but integrates easily with async functions. So with just stand, you don't get these additional functions as you see in Redux toolkit. If you go through the documentation of Redux Toolkit, which I feel could be a little more better, because there are so many things in Redux Toolkit, there are so many things they provide out of the box that it's a little hard to navigate through the documentation. But if you actually go deep down, there's actually a lot of cool things they provide when it comes to managing your network calls and optimizing them. So you can see it's best for Redux is best for large apps with strict patterns. Redux Toolkit is best for most React apps default choice now. So it doesn't even matter if it's a large app or a small app. Redux Toolkit will always assure you that it's going to be worthwhile. And this is the stand is for small to medium apps or when you want simplicity. There's also the community ecosystem thing. Redux Toolkit and Redux have a very good community. And the stand has a smaller community, but it's certainly growing fast. And you don't really need to know much. It's pretty easy to use the stand. You'll not fall into issues where you'll have to go through a lot of questions and answers and to find out your solution because it's pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, that overall is 
the difference between Redux, Redux Toolkit, and The Stand. I think all three of them are awesome. However, I think Redux, just classic Redux, has become way too outdated. Redux Toolkit or The Stand is the way to go. Or tools similar to Redux Toolkit can also be explored. But yeah, certainly these two are in the competing list. I would prefer Redux Toolkit more because it has a lot of things that it provides out of the box. So if you really want your app to work in an optimized manner, then you can spend a little more time to go into the depths of Redux Toolkit. And once you know how those things work, you can actually implement this and get the best of both worlds. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you have any thoughts or comments about this, then I would, then I would love to see your comments in the comment section below. If you found this insightful, then drop a like and subscribe for more.